What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlook here. We're going to be talking about Scream 7 in this video once again. Something that I didn't think I would be doing today, but courtesy of Beyond the Mask, something worthwhile if it's true because this came from a person who left a comment over on his community page. If this encounter is true, this is worth talking about or at least speculating on, I guess. So we all know that Nev Campbell, she passed on Scream 6 due to some reasons related to finances that she felt was just not up to her standards which is understandable considering everything she's given to the franchise we all of course would like her to have the most appropriate payday that we think she's entitled to but what i always try to do is remind people that this is not dimensions or anything these are new people they don't have the lasting relationship that i would argue that a company like miramax or dimensions and that weinstein company would I, I think would be more entitled to offer Nev Campbell, but Spyglass and Paramount, two completely different people, two completely different entities, I should say, that have don't really have the lasting long relationship with Nev Campbell the way she did with the Weinstein existence of Scream at the time. But she recently made some comments out at the Fan Expo in Denver where the Scream cast seemed to have a reunion. She stated this when apparently asked, shout out to you, Jade, who left this comment over on Beyond the Mess beyond the mask uh, community page when asked about her involvement in scream seven when asked if she was returning she didn't say she was but she didn't say she wasn't either she just said i don't know if i can talk about that which is rather interesting because if you recall she had no problem letting us know although i know people like me and some others were telling you she probably is lying I thought it was andrew garfield uh Toby Maguire situation where she was flat out just telling everybody, hey, I didn't I'm not doing Scream 6. This is why. And she kept on telling us over and over again why that she wasn't doing it. But she also stated about she also referenced Scream 7 in the past, making comments that she would return to the franchise, obviously, if everything, according to her standards, was being met in terms of how Sydney is written. And of course, also the ultimate thing that gets everybody in the door if the money's right. So when it comes to these recent comments, I don't know if I can talk about that. You know, it's not hard to see why people would look into it and say they must have at least asked her to return, right? Or if you want to look at it from another perspective, maybe she doesn't know if she can talk about that because she hasn't had any conversations with them and she doesn't want to rock the boat potentially. Uh, or again, the safest thing and the thing that many of us like to associate because of past experiences we've seen from other productions and other projects and other cast members saying words like this. She's had some sort of talk and we also know that the producers have expressed interest in this. They've always stated that the door is open. We, we know Radio Silence is open to it, even though some people, for whatever reason, want to bash Radio Silence and their handling of the legacy characters, whatever. We know that there are people open to her returning. So it's safe to assume if you want to get yourself excited, get yourself hyped, that she has been contacted and reached out to to return as Sydney Prescott. However, I will say this. I've stated this over and over again when talking about this character. She is not someone you just toss in there. You do not just simply do that. I get we all have a desire and a craving for this character. You have to start recognizing, though, that simply just getting her, that's not all you should want. Now, if you just simply want that, you don't care about the quality, you don't wait, you don't care about having any seasoning, you don't care how it's served to you, that's you. Me, I care. She's had so many substantial arcs or an arc with three different uh, pathways executed to said arc being completed in the original trilogy that all made her appearance worthwhile profound and reasonable for the times we were in now like i've stated in other videos she seems like she's just being giving these one arcs that start and end at the beginning of the recent movies we got in screen four and screen five that being so in screen six i would love or in screen seven i would love to have seen an arc established for Sydney that can stretch over three movies the way we've gotten in the past. But because this is presumably the concluding chapter of this recent trilogy, I don't think it would be that smart to now start a tenured arc for Sydney when you're about to wrap up the wrap the bow on the Carpenter trilogy. 
So what you should at least do is find something substantial to justify her presence. Give her something to work with. The easiest thing, obviously, is her kids. If you want to see her just show up for the sake of showing up because you think she's Sydney Prescott and she deserves screen time, I get where you're coming from. But that's not how you write the character. You don't simply just write her in because she's Sydney Prescott. You examine, do we have something for her to do? If we don't, you then admittedly might not be the best person to try to cook up anything for her then let her relax let her sit out let somebody come along if there ever is anybody who can come up with something worthwhile having her continue to appear over and over and over again my thing with this character like i've always stated is that she has a arc that has always recognized she is trying to get peace in her life she is not a punching bag she is not someone we're supposed to just be seeing over and over and over again and, and being like a Sarah Connor type character now where she's just showing up because Ghostface is back. She's going to show up with all her equipment, all her guns and everything she's gotten from her husband or whatever material has been supplied to her by influence from her husband, Mark Kincaid. We don't need to see that. She's not going to come running because Ghostface is back. As much as we've seen her run away, I don't think she should really be sacrificing her peace right now. For two girls she just met, because again, allegedly that's what she was going to be end up doing in Scream 6. She would have shown up at the end of the movie. She would have justified her return by saying Sam and Tara are family now and she needed to come save them for whatever freaking reason. We actually do see in Scream 6 that Sam has Sydney saved as a favorite. So clearly there's some type of communication still being made between those two, I would think. And they can address that in Scream 7. But Sydney needs to be giving something substantial to do. She shouldn't just show up as like a Sarah Connor type. Give her something worth investing in in regards to the recent Ghostface sprees. Don't let it just be another, oh, you killed my friend. I need to find out who you are now. That's a fine angle to take for a one and done approach. Give her something worthwhile. That's why I stated with us not having anything stretching over the past three movies that relates to her arc like the original trilogy does why not dig up one little last tidbit about marine and don't do it in a way that completely obliterates any prior canon events we now have that's why i've stated tell us that christina was heavenly not heavily but she knew about what was happening with marine she didn't speak up she knew what was happening at the time in 96 she didn't speak up for her own selfish reasons reveal her as the silent mastermind and connect that into why Marine ended up dead. Sydney could have some re some resentment towards her at that point. You knew what was going to happen to my mother and you did nothing. That could be a very dramatic bombshell to have unveiled in Scream 7. But you guys, let me know what you think about Nev's alleged comments down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and there's a video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.